Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you so much for being here. So we've got three different Marvel stories in this video which we're going to be diving into. So without further ado, let's jump into the first story and see what's going on with the latest kind of rumours and speculation surrounding the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we're going to start off with this one guys. And these articles come to us by the way from comicflicknews.com. So the first one, Marvel Studios rumoured to eye Dwayne The Rock Johnson for Apocalypse role in upcoming X-Men reboot. That's kind of exciting to hear that Dwayne Johnson could potentially be playing Apocalypse. Although on the flip side, a lot of fans could be saying that Dwayne Johnson is kind of oversaturated in the marketplace. And maybe people would prefer a different actor, someone who's a bit newer, a bit fresher coming in. But let's go down and let's have a read anyway and uh, see what this article has to say about Dwayne potentially being Apocalypse. So Marvel Studios upcoming X-Men reboot is generating quite the buzz with this latest rumor. Apparently, not only is the fan favorite villain Apocalypse set to make an appearance, which just the news of Apocalypse itself is absolutely incredible. The first mutant can't wait to see what they're going to do with that character. But Marvel's top choice to portray him is none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the wrestler turned actor with controversial stint in politics. While the rumor might seem far fetched, it's certainly stirring up excitement among fans and skeptics alike. So on May 7th, the latest gossip about the Mutant Super Team cinematic reboot surfaced, adding to a series of peculiar rumours. This particular whisper has brought to light by the renowned insider, My Time to Shine Hello. That's a kind of an insider, um, industry insider in the movie industry who kind of gets a lot of scoops right, gets some wrong. So take this news with a pinch of salt, guys. It could end up being true. It could end up being false. But um, this scooper does get a lot of things right, so uh, let's talk about it from a fan perspective anyway, and uh, let's see what this news is all about. So, who's reliable Marvel scoops lend credibility to the leak? Yeah, as I was saying, so this insider does get a lot of things right, so it's worth kind of um, listening to some of the news that this scooper does come out with from time to time. So, shared exclusively with the paid Instagram and Twitter subscribers, this revelation has sparked both intrigue and skepticism with the fan community. So we have a Twitter post here from MCU Scooper. Marvel Studios wants Dwayne Johnson to portray Apocalypse in the MCU. Source at my time to shine hello, like we already discussed above. But yeah, that's very interesting, guys, to hear about this. A lot of people would say that Dwayne Johnson is kind of appearing too much in movies. He's kind of too much of that kind of um, on-the-nose choice to play Apocalypse. Is he, you know, the right choice for this role? But then again, he would be heavily made up. Um, he would look very different to what he usually looks like, obviously, in this picture. So even though he would be playing Apocalypse, he would probably barely be noticeable within the movie playing the character himself. And he's got precedent for playing a superhero character already in Black Adam, which we're going to discuss in just a sec. But guys, let me know what you think about it. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. So let's keep reading. Unfortunately, the insider who broke the news about Marvel's uh, interest in casting Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Apocalypse couldn't provide any further details about the character's potential return to the big screen. The one thing that I would say about this news potentially not being true, we're absolutely years away from any kind of X-Men uh, project coming out, movie or series. So why would they have cast Dwayne Johnson this far ahead of time before, you know, a project is even on the horizon? Nothing's been announced. No X-Men movies have been announced, no X-Men series, live action series, nothing like that. We're years away from anything like that. So why would they have cast Dwayne Johnson this far out from an MCU project that hasn't even been announced yet? That's kind of why I feel that this news may not be real. But then on the flip side, you know, like I said, the scooper does get a lot of things right. So that adds a little bit of credence to the rumor itself. So you have to make up your mind for yourself, guys. So what's intriguing, that is, if Johnson does indeed take on the role of Ed, uh, N. Sabaneur, I can never say that right, N. Sabaneur, um, it, would be, it wouldn't be his first time betraying a powerful Middle Eastern-based superhero in a comic book adaptation, obviously playing Black Adam, Black Adam. His brief stint as the lead in DC's Black Adam already showcased his prowess in such roles. I think his betrayal of Black Adam was awesome. I think the guy absolutely embodied the character of Black Adam. It's just a shame that the movie was poorly written. I thought, other than that, I thought the fight scenes were good. I thought some of the choreography was good. The cinematography was good. But the thing that ultimately let it down was the writing and the story. But him playing Black Adam himself, if he was in a decent movie, he would have absolutely nailed that character. Um, so whether Johnson's previous superhero betrayal influenced Marvel's supposed interest in him playing Apocalypse remains uncertain. Given the current lack of originality in both the MCU and Hollywood at large, it wouldn't be surprising if it played a part in their decision-making process. 
And we got an awesome picture of Apocalypse here. I mean, Dwayne Johnson's got the muscles to match this character here. I mean, if you look at these muscles here, Dwayne Johnson pretty much looks similar here. <laughs> so, you know, slap a bit of uh, slap a bit of grey paint on Dwayne Johnson and uh, you got yourself an Apocalypse. <laughs> So the recent rumor about Johnson's potential involvement in the MCU's X-Men debut is just one of the many whispers surrounding the upcoming reboot, none of which have instilled much confidence in fans. There's not a lot of confidence to go around when it comes to Disney as a whole, you know, not just with Marvel, with, you know, with Star Wars as well and their Disney Plus series. They've lost a lot of confidence from their uh, audience base. So they're going to have to really work hard over the next few years to build up that trust again with their audiences when it comes to the MCU. The rumors began swirling back in July 2022, during the Marvel Studios appearance at San Diego Comic-Con. Deadline, after consulting their insider sources, hinted that the first X-Men film in the franchise might opt for a more inclusive title. Whatever that means, I have no idea. More inclusive? It sounds like they've got checkboxes for different, you know, races and genders and stuff. You know, typical Disney stuff. Um, the Mutants, um, inclusive title, The Mutants, instead of using the uh, gendered team name. So it would be called The Mutants instead of X-Men, because X-Men is an um, outdated terminology. We can't use that, so it has to be called The Mutants. That's absolutely ridiculous. There would be massive fan backlash if they did that. So in December 2023, insider Daniel uh, RPK Rickman, again, another one of these supposed insiders who has a lot of scoops, gets a lot of things right, gets a lot of things wrong. Uh, claimed based on his own sources that the upcoming X-Men film would deviate from previous Fox adaptations by omitting Magneto from its cast. Magneto is one of the most compelling characters. How could you get rid of Magneto? This move uh, was purportedly aimed at distinguishing the reboot from its predecessors. Additionally, Rickman uh, suggests that the film's narrative would focus predominantly on female members of the team. Yeah, we've already talked about this on the channel, guys. It looks like Disney want to go full steam ahead into a potential all-female cast when it comes to some of their X-Men properties. We'll have to see how that turns out. I have no problem with that whatsoever. If the characters are written well, they have decent story arcs to plot, the character, the narrative. If all of that is done well, then I couldn't care less if it's all female, all male, or a mix of both. Um, I just want good stories and good plots and, you know, just stuff like that. So um, the sex of the characters really has no bearing on it for me. In a subsequent update in May 2024, Rickman reiterated uh, Marvel Studios' intention to center the film around female mutants. He also indicated that the studio was aiming to strike a delicate balance between drama and, regrettably, comedy. I think that one of the most perfect tones that they ever struck within the MCU was Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, it had its silly, humorous moments, but it had its serious, dark undertones and action. That was the perfect balance between the two. If they can nail that with the X-Men, that kind of Thor, Thor Ragnarok kind of tone of silliness, humor, and the kind of serious tone at the same time, it's a very hard line to walk. But if they can get that tone right with the X-Men, I think we could be onto a winner. But we'll have to wait and see how that works out. So as of writing, Marvel Studios has yet to offer any official word regarding their potential X-Men reboot. Meanwhile, their next mutant-centric project, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, is, centered, uh, is currently is currently slated to uh, teleport into theaters on July 26th. So yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine is the only MCU movie coming out this year, so we're getting a bit of a breather from the MCU, and uh, we'll have to see what they can do in 2025 and 2026. But yeah, guys, like I said, the only thing that's making me a bit apprehensive about this news being correct is the fact that X-Men is years away. I mean, like, we've not heard anything to do about an X-Men live-action project, so why would they have cast Dwayne Johnson this far ahead of time? Is it the fact that his calendar is really busy, so they've had to book him years in advance to make sure he's available? I really have no idea, but that's the only thing that I can kind of think of that's making me doubt this news a little bit. But guys, jump into the comment section. Let me know what you think about this news. If Dwayne Johnson tomorrow was absolutely confirmed by Marvel that he's going to be playing Apocalypse in the upcoming X-Men uh, reboot, would you be happy about the decision? Do you think it's bad? Is it somewhere in between? Whatever your thoughts are, guys, pop it in the comment section and let us know. I can't wait to see what you have to say about that. So Sony Pictures, rumored to begin early development on a live action Spider-Gwen movie. So this article comes to us from comicflicknews.com. Yeah, this would be really, really exciting. I mean, in recent years, we've had the Into the Spider-Verse animated features that have brought Spider-Gwen to the forefront, you know, of the audience's minds. And it's done a lot to bolster the popularity of that character. And I think a lot of people would be really interested and excited if a live action Spider-Gwen movie was to be announced. I know I would be excited. And also the Spider-Man, you know, IP and franchise, it makes so much damn money. How would you not make this into a live action movie? But let's go down, let's read and see if we can find out what's going on with this Spider-Gwen movie. 
So, Madam Web was supposed to revolutionise Sony Pictures. <laughs> it literally did the complete opposite. It literally, like, destroyed all of Sony's reputation when it comes to Spider-Man characters. And uh, it's going to take them a good few years to recover from the, the, the massive bomb that that movie was. So, despite the box office success of Venom and its sequel, neither film received stellar reviews. And the dismal reception of Morbius drained any goodwill fans had for the studio. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've got Kraven the Hunter coming up soon. If that movie comes out, that's a Sony Spider-Man property as well. If that movie comes out and that absolutely bombs as well, then I think Sony's dead in the water. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do from that point onwards. Obviously, they can still continue their relationship with Marvel making the Tom Holland Spider-Man series. But as for their own separate Spider-Man spin-off universe... I think they're going to be dead in the water at that point. So initially, Madam Web was pitched as a standalone adventure that would shine a spotlight on Spider-Man's world, introducing three Spider-Women under the guidance of Cassandra Webb. It seemed like a stroke of genius, but the reality was different. Yeah, the execution was just absolutely awful. I think you could have done that movie justice. It could have done. It could have been done well. It absolutely could. I mean, anything could be made well if it's got a good plot and a good story. I mean, just look at things like the Lego movie. I mean, it's a movie about Lego blocks. That was successful and made, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. So I think that that movie could have done justice, but the execution was just really bad. So when Madam Web hit theatres, it became one of the biggest failures in the superhero genre, signalling the need for change. While it may be too late for the Craven the Hunter and Venom the Last Dance, Sony seems poised to make the course correction. So according to Insider at My Time to Shine Hello, again guys, we talk about a lot of these guys on the channel. They're sort of in, like industry insiders. They have their own Patreon accounts. They get scoops about, um, you know, potential news, leaks, speculation, rumors about Marvel. They get a lot of things right. They get a lot of things wrong. So take this news with a pinch of salt. Sony is in early stages of developing a live action Spider-Gwen movie. While details are scarce, if Spider-Man remains off limits due to his MCU ties, Spider-Gwen is the logical choice to fill that void. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Spider-Gwen is a really popular character. Like I said, Into the Spider-Verse, the animated features, she's one of the predominant characters in those animated Spider-Man features. And it's done a lot to, you know, make her a really popular character. But the thing is, will it translate to live action? Will a female kind of counterpart to Spider-Man, would it be as popular? Can it generate as much money and buzz with the audience as what Spider-Man himself does? I very much doubt that, but could it be profitable? That's the big question. Can it be profitable and can it be worth their while doing a live action Spider-Gwen? I think yes, but I'm not sure what you guys think, so you'll have to let me know about that. So, uh, some may argue that Miles Morales deserves more attention, but reports suggest he's set to debut in Spider-Man 4, potentially paving the way to the dual Spider-Man focus in the MCU's next trilogy. Yeah, I think they should do kind of what they did with the uh, Spider-Man games on PS5, where they introduce him in a small way, and then uh, kind of build up his character as they go along. But Miles Morales is more popular than he's ever been. I can't wait to see that guy in live action. And... Um, yeah, I, I, I hope they do the same with Spider-Gwen. I really do. Um, hang, having like a female counterpart to Spider-Man, I think would be awesome. I would love to see it. And um, But I think a lot of people would, they would call it woke. They would call it, you know, the female gender and all this kind of stuff. It depends how they write the character. It depends how they market it. And we'll have to wait and see because a lot of people are very suspicious with what Disney do at the moment with their properties. So uh, we'd have to see how that works out. Spider-Gwen uh, swung into Marvel Universe in 2014's Edge of Spider-Verse number 2, courtesy of writer Jason Latour and artist Robbie uh, Rodriguez. The iteration of Gwen Stacy originates from an alternate universe where she, not Peter Parker, receives the fatal spider bite. And this is the um, Edge of Spider-Verse here, uh, number 2, where we see uh, Spider-Gwen here. Pretty cool artwork, I love this kind of artwork, very cool. So in her reality, Peter transforms into the Lizard, forcing Gwen to confront and ultimately defeat him as Spider-Woman. This tragic encounter deeply influences Gwen's sense of responsibility and drives her superhero journey. So in her universe, Peter transforms into the Lizard and she becomes like the Spider-Man of that universe. So it's a kind of a different alternate universe take where she's like the Spider-Man character. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and I think a lot of people would be excited to see this in live action. I think it'd be very interesting. Something new, something different, something fresh, you know, from the Spider-Man kind of IP that we haven't seen before. So uh, Gwen Stacy has been seen, uh, Gwen Stacy has seen various portrayals on screen. Bryce Dallas Howard in Spider-Man 3, Emma Stone in the Amazing Spider-Man series, and Hayley Steinfeld uh, voice performance in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and its upcoming sequel, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. 
Personally, my favorite Gwen Stacy has to be Emma Stone. I think she's the best portrayal, the best live action on screen, uh, on screen, on screen Gwen Stacy that we've had. In my opinion, I know a lot of people feel the same. We never actually saw her suit up in the costume, but just seeing her there as Gwen Stacy was cool. And uh, I think she was the best portrayal, to be honest, of Gwen Stacy. But guys, let me know what you think about that. Well, Stone and Steinfeld are often fan favorites for Spider Gwen, <laughs> like I was just saying. Um, it's unlikely that they, uh, it's unlikely they'll don the suit in live action, as the character is typically depicted as a teenager. Expected more casting news on this project as it develops. Could you even imagine if they announced an Emma Stone Gwen Stacy Spider Girl, like Spider Woman or whatever uh, movie? That would be insane. I like, I think a lot of people would be super excited for having Emma Stone cast in the uh, Gwen Stacy role. People would go nuts. Um, now that she's like an Oscar caliber actor as well, you know, just, you know, who, who better to play than someone who's already played her on screen already? And um, I think this would be amazing. But then you kind of have that confusion with audiences. She's from the Amazing Spider-Man um, universe, so it's a bit different. She's not from Tom Holland's um, universe. She's from uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man universe. So there could be some confusion there among fans. So they may opt to go a different route. We'll have to see how that works out. But um, yeah, so there we are, guys. So there's rumors, um, speculation, rumors bubbling behind the scenes about a potential live action Gwen Stacy movie. Would you guys be excited for that? Having like a female kind of counterpart to Spider-Man? Do you think it could be as popular or not as popular? Whatever your thoughts are, pop them in the comment section. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say about this as always. Thanks. So we have a rumor, Marvel Eyes, Ryan Coogler for Black Panther 3 directorial role and potential x-men project so this article comes to us from comicflicknews.com this is all kinds of cool i mean ryan coogler obviously he did black panther one and two uh you know black panther two wakanda forever that wasn't as well received as the first movie was i thought the movie was still pretty cool again wasn't as well received as the first black panther but obviously the passing of chadwick boseman they had to kind of you know go back and kind of reshuffle that movie we didn't have chadwick boseman there so obviously i kind of understand why people may have felt that it wasn't as good as the first one but anyway that's enough of me rambling let's jump into this article let's find out what's going on with black panther 3 and another potential x-men project that ryan coogler may be involved with so ryan coogler director of black panther and black panther wakanda forever has expressed his willingness to continue his journey with the franchise by helming a third installment now rumors suggest that he has indeed signed on to the job but that's not all. Marvel Studios may have bigger plans for Coogler within the MCU. Absolutely, this guy is a world-class talent when it comes to directing. He's done a great job with the two Black Panther movies he's already done. You know, it absolutely makes sense. Keep him in the MCU loop. He's a respected, um, great kind of director. So have him working on Black Panther 3, absolutely. And then have him, you know, kind of build out the X-Men universe. That absolutely makes sense. You know, retain all the good directors that you possibly can. Why would you let go of a world-class director like Ryan Coogler? Keep him in the keep him in the loop in the MCU. So according to Insider, my time to shine. Hello, this is an insider, industry insider. Gets a lot of scoops right, gets a lot of scoops wrong. They have social media pages and stuff like that, guys. So take this news with a little bit of pinch of salt. It could be correct, it could be wrong, but we're talking about it from a fan perspective, just to kind of the enjoyment of the conversation. And uh, it's always fun to kind of speculate as a fan, you know. So Marvel was eyeing Coogler to direct the anticipated X-Men reboot. This aligns with the previous rumors indicating a desire for a person of color to lead the project. Additionally, there's buzz that Barry Jenkins, known for Mufasa the Lion King, is also under Marvel's consideration. So Black Panther Wakanda Forever served as a poignant tribute to T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman while laying the groundwork for Shuri's ascent as the new Panther and introducing a hidden aquatic civilization. The mid-credits scene hinted at T'Challa's son, foreshadowing his future role as Wakanda's ruler and protector. With such a rich story uh, telling elements introduced, the stage is set for an exciting development in future sequels. I absolutely love what they've done with the whole universe of building out Black Panther. I think the character is so interesting. Living in this kind of futuristic, utopian kind of, you know, Wakanda kind of world, and then kind of juxtapose that against, you know, human civilization, and kind of the mythos and the, the tribalness that comes from the Black Panther, um, you know, legend and all that kind of stuff. I just think he's such a cool character and he's so interesting. When he first showed up in Civil War, he was one of the coolest characters and he was just absolutely awesome. So we have this great artwork here, obviously showcasing just Black Panther himself. Look at this costume. I mean, this is one of the coolest costumes in the MCU. The guy is so, so cool. Um, these massive like vibranium claws. 
Um, I believe it's Vibranium, the claws, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize if I got that wrong, but I think his claws are Vibranium. Um, they might not be within the MCU, but... Um... So, yeah, we have this image here of Black Panther showing in all of his glory. I mean, the costume there. I mean, just look at how cool that costume is. It looks absolutely fantastic. I would not want to get swiped in the head with those claws. That would take your face straight off. <laughs> or one of your body limbs if you got hit with it. But, yeah, one of the coolest characters in the MCU by far. And uh, the passing of Chadwick Boseman, you know... Um, will forever be missed and uh the guy just absolutely nailed the role so during a 2022 interview with the new york times kugler admitted that he'd be glad to stay on the franchise for as long as folks will have me i feel blessed that i have the opportunity to work on these movies bro when i got asked to do the first one it was like a moving train i thank god every day that i was able to jump on it and meet these people these actors and to meet chadwick during some of the last years of his life that must have been incredible working with him um i'll do it for as long as the folks will have me but I think it's bigger than just me or Joe. Between the first and second movie, we made $2 billion at the box office. Wow. Just goes to show the popularity of this character. The representation of Black Panther and just everything that goes along with the message and the mythos of the Black Panther character is very, it's really important to people that, you know, the representation of the character, um, which is what matters and the most, and most corporations. So I hope it, it continues, man. I hope people are still making movies about Wakanda long after we're gone. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this character is going to be popular. You know, there's going to be media. There's going to be comics, series, TV shows, movies about this character for years to come. People love this character. So as for the X-Men, Marvel is expected to announce a writer soon. Given the caliber of directors they've worked with in the past, it's plausible that Kevin Feige and his team would consider someone like Ryan Coogler to lead the mutant hero's return to the big screen, although Coogler's interest remains uncertain. Currently, Cougar is busy directing his untitled vampire movie featuring Michael B. Jordan and producing various Disney Plus MCU projects, along with the X-Files reboot. Looking forward to that. X-Files is awesome. Um, if he's indeed committed to directing Black Panther 3, he may hesitate to take on another major franchise film given his already packed schedule. So he's currently working on Disney Plus MCU projects and he's got the X-Files reboot. So if he does get around to Black Panther 3, I don't think we're going to see this film you know, it's going to be a good two or three, maybe possibly four, even five. Could be anywhere up to four or five years until we get Black Panther 3. Um, but, you know, there's a lot more coming down the pipeline as well. We've got the Avengers movies and all that kind of stuff. There's so much going on with Marvel and the, the rumors and speculation. And it's hard to keep up with it all. So, but I'm trying, we're trying our best here, guys. So, um, but it would be super exciting to have Ryan Coogler back. As I said, he did a great job with the first two Black Panther movies. Second one wasn't received as well, like I've already said. But um, it was still a great movie in my opinion. So I'd be excited for him to work on a third movie. So what are your thoughts? Would you be excited to see Ryan Coogler take on the challenge of helming an X-Men reboot? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Yeah, I think the guy's absolutely ripe to do an X-Men movie. If he can bring the same kind of gravitas that he did to that first Black Panther movie and some of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever, if he can bring that into an X-Men project, I'm all the more happy for it. If it was announced tomorrow, I'd be all over it. I think it'd be great, fantastic news. It would be a massive win for all the fans and, uh, you know, marvel themselves to have ryan coogler making the x-men movie but yeah guys so that's kind of where we are regarding this rumor here so it sounds like um from the inside scooper my time to shine hello he's saying that ryan coogler is being eyed to work on the x-men reboot and that he signed on to do uh black panther 3 which is kind of a given you would keep the guy on make him allow him to kind of finish out his trilogy of black panther movies which kind of makes sense but that's all we are. That's all the news we have for this video, guys. Let me know what you think about this. Would you be excited to have Ryan Coogler working on an X-Men project? And what do you think about him coming back to, to finish off his trilogy with the third Black Panther? Do you think it's a good choice, a bad choice? Whatever your thoughts are, pop them in the comment section, guys. I can't wait to see what you have to say about this. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you do enjoy my content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe for more videos. And I will see you in the next one.